Hey, it's Alan here. And Bree. And, and we, we are, are the, the hunter, hunter and, and the, the hippie. hippie. Connected through yoga and bonded by our love of the wild places and the love for outdoors, we've come together to share our conversations about life. Well, maybe more so what we've learned or are continuing to learn about life. And there's no one way to do it. Life that is. And hopefully provide you with some teeny tiny bits of inspiration to connect deeper with yourself, others, and our great Mother Earth. All right, all right, enough already about the podcast. Let's just get to the podcast. Good so you, afternoon. <laughs> so you ran 0.0, zero, <laughs> 0. <laughs> 0 miles today. <laughs> I did. I ran exactly 0. 0. 0.0 miles. And uh, I, not to be shown up by your 5.2 or anything. But <laughs> Well, it's funny you, why I said only 5.2 is because I'm trying, I'm in the phase where I actually don't want to be, unless it's run club night, uh, uh-huh. I don't want to be running less than like eight miles. Um, oh, really? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Why, why is that? I want those to be like my, so it was like this gradual buildup. So it's like, okay, I got to get out for a run and be like three miles. And so I'm just doing say three miles four times a week or something. Yeah. And then some other longer stuff. And then it was like up to like five to sixers were my like four times a week thing. And now mm-hmm. I'm at the stage where I want my four, four times a week to be eight to 10 and then have mm. an additional longer run. Um, yeah, so that's why. Uh, how long have you been at that? The eight, the eight. Yeah, yep. I well, it dropped off the last couple of weeks because of all that work I've been doing. Uh huh. <laughs> so. And so, what does your whoop strap say about the increase in mileage? Well, my whoop strap says that I'm working too much and not sleeping enough. <laughs> <laughs> and how do you feel? In case you haven't do, seen my recovery. Do, do you do you feel that that's accurate? Yes. Yeah, you do. Oh yeah, for yeah. sure. I feel tired. I that's just am um, not. Yeah, I feel tired and I'm, but so it's okay. But you, well, the reason I said what I responded to was I said. I did not do jujitsu this weekend, yep. and I want to hear about this neck and of yours. I, what I hurt my yeah, I, I hurt my neck this weekend. I uh, so I do jujitsu, so like three classes a week. I try to get to three classes a week, and then then there's a, what's called an open mat, and that's just like where you go and you you just practice what you've learned, and you know you essentially it's some people call it sparring, some people just right call it rolling um so it just depends right you should have like a goal in mind when you go to these open mats um but it's like your own goal like you're not going there for instruction per se Mm -hmm. like you'll learn things from people like they'll they'll love stuff to to share so you you will learn things but you're not going there for like a class does that make sense it's like a pickup basketball game yeah yeah pretty much yep yeah exactly like you're yeah you go to there to like play the basketball play Play the basketball. Play the basketball. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So you're you're going there to like do the things that you've learned, mm-hmm. right? And and just play the game of jujitsu. Not like instead of like to keep it on the basketball thought is like you would go to your 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 coach. Your what would it be like your practice? And like you would do like dribbling drills or like mm-hmm. you would shoot from the free point uh the the free throw line or the three point line right like mm-hmm. you just do that that's like that would be the the practice for the day um but some days right they might include a little bit of scrimmage um, scrimmage right or you just like you said this is you just go to the the park right there's eight guys hanging around oh you want to play a game all right let's do it mm-hmm. so yeah absolutely same thing same concept cool um and my second round on an open mat Saturday, uh, my buddy, he's a, he's a great dude. Uh, he, he just, he got me in a position where we went to roll and we rolled, both of us rolled on my neck, oh. not just me. Right. But both of us got to roll on my neck yeah. and, and I didn't turn my head mm-hmm. the way I should have. And instead I left my head straight. And so I pretty much rolled right over my neck with him on top of me. So I rolled on top of my neck and he rolled on top of my neck. Oh. And, um, it, so the, the SCM, 
which is the muscle. Uh, I don't know the scientific breakdown of SEM. So something mass masticoid. Anyway, it's that muscle that is like right at the base of your skull on the mm-hmm. back of your neck. Um, yeah, like I just felt that it didn't pop or, or didn't make a noise or anything, but it fucking hurts. Yeah. And it's gotten better since Saturday. Um, I've been doing i've been taking care of myself Uh yeah i've been what does that look like yeah so like and that's the thing is self-care right we had a whole episode on self-care so we don't have to go huge into that although we're going to be talking about like yoga today and what it means to us but um so i had to adjust right i have to adjust my self-care routine to quickly recover from an injury Mm. right because i i hate being out like I hate being injured, not because I'm injured and I'm like, this sucks. Like I'm injured and it hurts. I hate being out. Cause like FOMO, like mm. fear of missing out. Like, like I do not want to miss a jujitsu class. Right. Especially for like something stupid, like, Oh, my neck. Like I should just be able well, to like, swap it. I don't think it. your like, neck is that stupid. It, it is. It is. I it is. I wish I could like. a significant <laughs> part of your body. I'm just going to throw that out there. <laughs> I totally wish I could like swap out parts. Like, like, Oh, this one's bad. Like I need a new one. Like, oh, my stupid neck. It right. only holds my head up. Right. Right. And connects to my <laughs> So, so yeah. So I like, totally it's not a like i saturday i wish i could have kept rolling um and i just i literally like if i if i moved my head like the tiniest little bit it hurt so bad like shooting pains up into like my skull and uh and, like i just couldn't couldn't keep rolling so i just hung out and i watched other people roll and took some notes and did that thing did the whole like watch tapes type of thing right so i went from playing the the pickup game to all right, I'm just going to watch these people play and mm. see if I can learn from their game type of thing. And, uh, but yeah, so I've, 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 I've adjusted my, my self care routine. So now like I've been using a lot of, uh, warm, like compress. Mm-hmm. So like warm, like I've rice bags I throw in the microwave mm-hmm. and I'll, I'll use that. And then sauna. So I have a sauna in my house. I don't know if I've talked about that, but I have a sauna. I yeah. didn't know that. Yeah. I have a sauna in my home gym. What kind of infrared or infrared? Oh my God. Yeah. yeah. It, it's, it's nice. It's really nice to have. Um, and, and I, and I neglect it, uh, every so often. And then I remember how awesome it is and how important it is. Um, Every it, time it you like, go to neglect it, think about me wishing that I had one and yeah. let that motivate you to go. Yeah, for real. For, real. <laughs> for all the so, people so, who want one and don't have one, you better right. be using that. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, so I, uh, I I definitely haven't been neglecting it. I'm like, I'm going to jump in there after this, actually. Um I'll do, I'll do one day. We'll do an episode. It has to be like a 20 minute episode from the, from the sauna. Wait, can we do it when we do the in-person one? <laughs> oh, we you totally can. We'll sit in the sauna and do it. Yeah, let's do it. Oh <laughs> It'll be like a 20 minute wait. episode because I'm like a big wuss when it comes to heat. So. We'll go like start it in there and then come out and come out. Be yeah. So chill. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so yeah. So the, the sauna, like all the heat, like the infrared, um, for those that don't know, I'm not going to go through all the benefits one, cause I don't know them all, but, uh, one of the huge benefits of, uh, of a sauna is that it actually helps create more red blood cells in your body. And if you don't know the importance of red blood cells, uh, and your breath, they go together because red, red blood cells actually deliver oxygen, uh, to your body and your body parts. Um, and red blood, red blood cells are what helps, uh, like heal the like muscles and things like that. So uh, I, I've felt a huge difference in like the two days that I've been in the sauna and been doing the hot compress. Um, and then Advil, I do take Advil. So a little anti-inflammatory, um, and then just stretching. So I've been doing, it, it's funny. A lot of my yoga classes, well, I, I only taught Sunday and then I'll teach tomorrow. My yoga classes, I, uh, I'll do a lot of things that I need in my yoga classes. Like I'll teach people. So, uh, I was like, we're doing neck stretches today. And uh, so Sunday's class, we did a bunch of stretching the neck and, and that helped. So uh, I, I recently learned this one stretch to actually stretch those those orbital muscles mm. um, that are right back there. And uh, yeah, like 
it's really helpful, really intense stretch. Um, so yeah, that's been my self care routine is trying to like make my neck better as fast as possible before class tomorrow night, Tuesday. Cause you don't want to uh, do neck stretches in yoga. Again? No, I, no, I absolutely want to do neck stretches <laughs> in yoga. I don't want to have a hurt neck so I can do jujitsu. <laughs> and then my instructor, of course, he like puts out what we're going over this week in classes or yeah. we're going over guillotines or guillotines, which okay. is, uh, it's, it's a strangulation of the neck yeah. and, and it's like a compression of the neck. So <sighs> like exactly like the thing I don't want to be doing. Um, so we'll see how we'll see. I might just take notes. We'll, we'll see yeah, I was going to say, maybe that's the universe saying you need to take yeah. a little longer with mm-hmm. it. It you might, know? It's like, it might well, be. We'll see. This week, this is what we're doing, which is like, no, you shouldn't go mm-hmm. back yet. <laughs> yeah, maybe. <laughs> I'm stubborn, though. I'm stu- But yeah. it, right now, like, I know if I were to try it right now. So, like, I'm feeling so much better. So, Saturday, if you're watching the video, Saturday, I couldn't, like, this was as far as I could turn my head to the left. Mm. Um, and so now without even like hesitation, I'm like almost back to full mobility of where I can normally turn, but I can definitely feel it pulling. Mm. Um, and it's, and it's the compression that hurts, not the stretching. So the stretching, so like stretching into the side of the neck in any of these directions is totally fine, but it's the compression Mm. of it that it's like when I go backwards and to the side is where it really starts to get irritated. And, not not be very happy so yeah yeah take so care none of, of that, that please yeah i will so it's like my first like big neck injury in a while yeah yeah and to everyone out there i'm totally being like facetious with like the neck injury and like yes i i hate being i do hate being injured and but your neck is a serious one like yeah like neck injuries i tell like when i teach headstands in my class i'm a big like warning guy like if you have any neck injuries do not do headstands Mm -hmm. like headstands are are awesome they're they prove a lot of value they they have a lot of value and uh but if you have even the slightest neck issue they're not worth doing yeah they're not worth exacerbating a a, a neck injury for i did you i i have no problems with headstands i don't teach them anymore Mm -hmm. i like stopped teaching them pretty soon after I started teaching yoga. Mm -hmm. Um, Why for? Because you can get the same benefits from a handstand, from a forearm stand, Mm -hmm. and you don't have... Because even though, if you're doing it properly, your head is like barely touching, like it's like almost hovering the ground. It's barely Mm -hmm. touching the ground for -hmm. for a headstand. Mm -hmm. But there is still an energetic pressure that's happening. Mm -hmm. Like for example, when I, after I broke my back, some of my PT was called, I'm going to say the order wrong. I think it, it was either like activation energy or energy activation to resell set my pelvis. Mm -hmm. And it was me just gently pressing the outside of my left foot against a wall. He's like, it's not pushing it hard. You're just pushing it so much Mm -hmm. that you can hold a paper there. Mm. And it was to activate certain muscles. Mm -hmm. So why I kind of stopped is because even though someone is probably doing it, like, well, most people maybe aren't doing it properly, properly and probably putting a little too much pressure on the crown Mm -hmm. of their head. But even if you are, there's that, there is this slight pressure that is going to be transferred and, um, and again, like, I don't have a problem. Like I'm, I don't like criticize or judge or care if anyone teaches them for me. I just was like, I don't mess with people's necks. <laughs> like, yeah. That mm-hmm. was a bit like that. Just, I don't There was, there's like weird little things in my teaching that I just like, I just don't teach that. Yeah. And again, you can do that in another class and that's great, but I'm, mm-hmm. I'm staying away from that because I got people might not even know that they have issues going on in their neck. I Mm -hmm. actually have a friend who he, something happened. He fell, hurt himself, whatever, did nothing about it. Decades later, he went in for some other injury. And they're like, did you ever break your neck? And he was like, 
Not that I huh? know of. He had yeah. broken his neck and That's didn't crazy. even know. That's wild. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's that's so wild you know because because everyone has different pain capacities yep. right and like mm-hmm. you're someone who's gonna tough through things and like mm-hmm. i think there's nothing i'm one of those people as well however right. there's also like there's a lot and our bodies do amazing jobs but there's also like we unless we're getting a scan like sometimes we actually have no idea the damage that we've oh, done yeah. and so I, I think a lot of, there are quite many people who come into yoga classes without that connection to their bodies. Mm-hmm. Um, and that's part of why they're coming in or they start to gain that connection to their body and to get a little more intuitive through the practice. Um, yep. But a lot of people are just like, yeah, I'm going to go do it. Yep. And I was like, I'm not responsible for that. <laughs> not me. <laughs> yeah, funny. it's funny. It, yeah. I laugh yeah. at like my few weird things where I'm like, now we're teaching that. Nope, nope, nope. <laughs> it, 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 you know, it's, it's crazy because in uh, my teacher training, the way that uh, the way that my teacher, my teacher like won't teach headstand either. Oh. Um, for, for similar, for similar reasons. Cause people don't just know, um, when I teach it, I, I put a very heavy disclaimer, like, like seriously, like if your neck, if you think your neck is bothering, and again, like some people, they don't even know like your friend. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, it's just right. The, the way that you learn to do it, um, can also cause injuries in itself, right. Mm-hmm. With headstands and, and yeah, there are certain things, um, I used to teach and my, my, one of my old teachers used to teach, go from like, go from, uh, half moon, Arda Chandrasana, mm-hmm. okay. Into warrior three. Mm-hmm. So, uh, for those that don't know, right. You're, you're essentially, your hips are stacked on top of each other in, in half moon mm-hmm. and t- and you're you're flipping the hips into a flat position where they're, where they're even. So it's like external rotation into neutral rotation. Right. Right. And, um, and like I used to have a lot of hip issues and Mm -hmm. this is when I did like a lot of Ashtanga and uh, Ashtanga is so, so bad for you. Um, (laughs) but, uh, yeah, I, we used to do that, go from, Arda Chandrasana to, to warrior three and that, that flip of the hips. And like, I would hear my hips like click mm-hmm. in that. And it's just cause you have so much pressure on the one hip and they're stacked and they're even. And then when you do it, uh, when you, when you flip your hip down to go into the warrior three, um, it's like, you're, you're trying to like catch yourself from falling mm-hmm. essentially. And yeah, it's just, it's not good for you. And there's a lot of things now that I don't teach because of the the things that I learned about the body. Mm-hmm. That that being one of them. It's funny you say that because I am a, a little bit of a a little neurotic when it comes to external and a rotation and neutral poses, mm-hmm. and so that's all mm-hmm. referring to the hips. Yep. I will not transition one to another. So I'll never have you in crescent with your hands up and go into warrior two. Oh, you will God, always no. bring your hands down. You will reset mm-hmm. the rotation so, of your hips same. and come back up for that exact reason. Yep. Because there is a lot like all the way that your hips are connected, mm-hmm. um, that can rub on like the socket of, and I actually don't know exactly, but however, whatever the socket is that your femur right? The head of your femur. So I mm-hmm. guess your femoral head. <laughs> yeah. Yep. Anatomy yep. is not my strength. Yeah. Femoral I understand head. how it works. I don't know I this. Don't. I don't know the, what the socket is and, and anatomically, um, but it's the but femoral your, head. Yeah. Into your hip. And so there is like a ligament that goes through there that can rub it. And people have mm-hmm. actually like, will get tears in that. Mm-hmm. Um, I can feel when mine's rubbing, even just mm-hmm. from like moving my legs a certain way. Um, yeah. so that's when you were talking about rotating from Arda Shandrasana mm-hmm. to, um, warrior three, I was like, yeah, it's like, I just stick with the same rotation yep. or you're coming down and you're fully resetting the legs yep. before 100%. you're coming 
back up. Even even from Warrior One to Warrior Two, I mm-hmm. won't do. Like I my my they used to teach that as well. Like you just go from Warrior One, and it's really interesting because if you're really like if you really care at all about alignment and like how the way the hips work, is is that that doesn't work. Like yeah. the way like even if you your hips do move like that. It doesn't work because of the way that like you're supposed to be aligned. Like mm-hmm. you're when you're in Warrior One, your feet are are hip distance apart. Mm-hmm. When you're in Warrior Two, they're in alignment, mm-hmm. right? And that's because of the rotation of what your hips should be doing, mm-hmm. right? So the the end result of your feet is actually the determination of how your hips are moving, mm-hmm. right? So to go from you know, this, this one pose where you're, you're here and hips are facing forward. And then, like you said, right in, at neutral into an external rotation where you're just opening the hips up wide. Yeah, it's, it's not, it's not good for you. Yeah. Yeah. This is a different, it's a different setup and you're doing different teeny little actions in the body to mm-hmm. maximize those openings. But yeah, I love that you said that. It fills my heart. <laughs> <laughs> I know this one's not a crowd pleaser, but I don't teach pigeon very often. Oh no! Mm-mm. And Why everyone not? I love wants pigeon. to. Pigeon, everyone pigeon. wants pigeon, and they just want to lie in it and just bathe in their sensation mm-hmm. junkie, mm-hmm. like shoot up mm-hmm. their pigeon. You know. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Um, <laughs> <laughs> why? Why don't you teach it? I it, that is like a staple. Every class of mine, there's. A I pigeon. do figure four. On figure, your back. Same pose. Figure same four pose. on your back. Um, you get to control the what's happening, yep. as opposed to your entire body weight. Mm-hmm. And then, like, I mean, honestly, I think big thing at being in the climbing gym teaching, mm-hmm. where you have a lot of, and this is a generalization, but a yep. lot of dudes with. Hips, hips that aren't flexible and mm-hmm. like real sensitive knees. Mm-hmm. I was like, Ooh, I don't want someone yeah. to just like pop out. And there's different ways you can set up pigeon that support, support it. Right. Like I, and that's why I don't, Blocks it's not 100% blankets. that I don't teach right. it, but I'm like, if you can get the same thing in a figure four on your back, mm-hmm. like great, because it is, I also have very loose hips. So yep. for someone like me, we've talked about this in a past episode where you can't just fall into your flexibility. Mm-hmm. Pigeon probably isn't great for me because I'm overstretching my hips at this point, right? I'm I'm actually not engaging the muscles to support it. I'm just mm-hmm. like l- allowing myself to kind of just fall into um, yeah. my like quote my tendency. I guess lig- you would say, yeah. And, and you're women, falling into your ligaments and you're falling into your tendons. and Yeah. And women have their, um, especially now that we're more active and mm-hmm. we, a lot of our back problems are hip related because mm-hmm. our hips come out further. So we have all of that, everything that connects is traveling out more. So it's kind of like basically getting stretched out more just naturally. Yep. And um, the movements, right, of sports, of running, all of that uh, starts to it has a lot further to travel than a male. And so that's where it's like women usually are more flexible in it, but is mm-hmm. that necessarily like the best thing for them to just like, again, be a sensation junkie and just like sit in fall it. and lie yeah. into this pose where all of a sudden the ligaments are getting even more stretched out. Yep. Um, but I, I mean, I love it. I love the pose. I just, it's one of my weird things where I'm like, I'll do it every once in a while because I know it's a crowd pleaser, but mm-hmm. I was like, mm, all right, figure four. <laughs> and I'll, when I, when I teach it, I teach it every class and, and yeah. I, I say, I always say two things. Like first off, if you're in pigeon, right, it's an active pose, mm-hmm. right? So the, if you're right legs forward, right hip back, left hip forward, protect the knee, pull the toes to the knee, right? Mm-hmm. Like, cause you don't realize the stress that you're putting on the knee either. Mm-hmm. People think that it, that it's just this hip stretch and, and it's not, it is right. Like it's not a knee stretch either. You're mm-hmm. just putting pressure on your LCL, your lateral cruciate ligament, mm-hmm. right? It's inside or medial. I don't know. Stupid anatomy, stupid anatomy. We, we one of the, one, <laughs> one of the ligaments on the sides of your, on the inside of your knee, yeah. right? You're putting all sorts of pressure on. And, mm-hmm. um, yeah. So like, I always like, cue to like do these things that protect all of your ligaments hopefully um 
but again like i see people on camera like just like falling into it and i'm like guys like quit it you know like i try to do i try to like get people to like see and and one thing that is hard why i do miss teaching in person is uh i it's it's hard to see and and feel Mm -hmm. like you know i I love being able to touch my students in the sense of yoga, right? Because I can feel what they're engaging and like, Mm. especially when it comes to their hips, um, like you can, you, you know, or like if you can see it also, you can go and you, like, if you tell someone pull your right hip back, a lot of people don't know where their right hip is. Mm -hmm. Like meaning they can point to it. Like they know like physically, like they can point to where their right hip is, but they can't control their right hip. Mm -hmm. Um, and a lot of people get into yoga to start right getting more in tune with their bodies Um, but you'd be surprised like like pull your right hip back and people just don't move or like they Mm -hmm. don't understand what you mean uh, in that in that cue so like I, I love being able to just like like just even just touching right like you know this as a teacher right just like going up and like putting your hand on on that the hip or putting your hand on shoulders like you don't have to even make adjustments it's bringing their awareness to Mm -hmm. a specific part of the body that they are not aware of yet Mm -hmm. and then they like like shoulders are a big one like you can go up to someone's shoulders who like they're they're standing there with their shoulders up by their ears and you're like like i just look at these people and i'm like oh my god you look so uncomfortable and you can just go up to them and you don't have to do anything you just put your hands on their shoulders and they just instantly will put them down Mm -hmm. and uh and then they're like, oh, is that what that's supposed to feel like? Um, so, yeah, I uh, I don't know where I'm going with this. What were we talking about? Uh, total. Pigeon. <laughs> pigeon, pigeon. So, yeah, so with, with pigeon, um, I will then say, like, also is available lying yeah. down figure four. And, right, I tell them, this is the same exact pose as pigeon, but people just love being in pigeon. You're so right. Right. And like, this is the same exact pose as pigeon. It just gives you full control of the pressure on the hips. Mm -hmm. And, you know, and I still cue them to like pull the toes towards the knee because it still puts pressure on the knee. Mm -hmm. And yeah, they, people just still love pigeon. People flip over into lying down, but I love it. I I love it. I love teaching it. Yeah. It's, it's, yeah, it's a gem. I think mm-hmm. I had one student who used to be like, can we please do pigeon? I was like, all right, I'll do one just for you. Mm. <laughs> you go to pigeon. Everyone else goes lying down. Yeah. I was like, when I say figure four, you can do pigeon. Yeah. No, and I get it. It's, it is more, I mean, unless you're, sometimes I'll do a class using the wall and then you could do a figure four without, with less effort. But I think mm-hmm. people like the idea of like relaxing into the pose. And um, so I get like, when you're doing figure four, you're having your arms have to be more active because they're drawing mm-hmm. it into deepen it versus your body deepening it. Um, and yeah, I, but I know they're going to get pigeon in your class or someone else's class. Yep. So it's like, yep. well, I don't really need to teach. <laughs> yeah. let, let their knee pop out in some way. <laughs> <laughs> let, it, let it happen to me. Let's talk about the real ultimate hip stretch though. Frog pose yeah like no one teaches frog pose yeah and like frog pose should be like every class and it is hands in my mind hands down it's my favorite it's my favorite hip stretch but frog pose it's funny like when i teach it and people haven't ever done it and like they're like what are we doing especially like when you're when you're teaching it in person because like you're gonna end up like with a butt in your face if you don't stagger yeah and uh and people will go into it and they'll be like, what's this? And then they'll like push their hips back and they'll be like, holy shit. <laughs> like, I'm like, yeah, say hello to your hips. Yeah. But that's, yeah, that's my favorite hip stretch. I had a student though who couldn't um, do two external rotations. So like she couldn't, um, mm. uh, goddess or horse stance was yeah. like awful for her. Uh huh. Like just, painful or would she like just fall over? Like no, like extremely painful. Oh wow! Mm-hmm. Yeah, Did she, have, so like, she couldn't uh, rotate her mm-hmm. her feet yeah. out. Yeah, um, she just was like, I hate. Like she's like, it's so painful. I was like, don't do it then. Don't, <laughs> like, yeah. Gosh, why are you telling me this now? Like, how right. long have you been doing this? Yeah, and I was like, <laughs> but it makes me sad because I'm like, yeah, frog is like, uh. <laughs> oh, I love it. Yeah, like 
frog goddess even right just goddess you you're you have to like rely on your balance too Mm -hmm. that's why i'm not like goddess is fun but like frog you just get to go to your knees and just chill breathe into the hips press the hips back and yeah and you you just get to see your life flash before your eyes it's fantastic (laughs) well i think those are more i mean because i guess it depends what part of the hips we're talking about right because like everyone's like oh vision is the best hip opener i was like oh like a warrior two is a phenomenal hip opener you know Mm -hmm. like Mm -hmm. it's just depending on what kind of rotate or like what um what kind of opening or what part of the hip you're kind of focusing on but yep um let's breathe a little bit and then we can keep talking all right cool let's do it (laughs) this is the new let's let's breathe into the hips this is the new thing we we, we talk we talk for 30 maybe you should lead it you should lead it today Oh, what you crazy? You just, All right, I just I'll give it a shot. All right, you're, you're doing the, the journal prompt then. Okay, I'll do the journal prompt. How do you breathe into your hips? Yeah. My hips don't breathe. I love I love saying that when uh, I I remember. Sorry, little quick tangent. I remember the first time I heard that teacher say, "Breathe into your hips," and I like, lifted my head up. We were in pigeon, and I'm like, "Huh? Like, what do you mean, breathe into my hips? Like." I don't understand. My hips don't breathe. My hips don't breathe. What do you now mean? Now they do. <laughs> All right. Out. All right. Alan's doing the breath today. Bree has put me on the spot. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. All right. So, uh, so we're going to breathe into the hips. And I know your hips don't have lungs, so don't worry about that. But what I want you to do first is uh, if, you're, if you're driving, okay, so... Um, don't don't crash okay if you're driving don't crash don't close your eyes so i'm gonna give everyone the cue to close their eyes here in a second but uh if you're driving don't don't crash um but what i want you to do is uh, if you're driving and you don't have a stick shift definitely relax your left leg uh just like let it just go to the floor it might be relaxed already your your knee might fall uh, open a little bit depending on your hips right um for those of us that are hanging out just listening uh, what I want you to do is uh, come into frog pose if you have the ability. Uh, yeah, yeah, go go to frog pose. Okay. So if you don't know what frog pose is, uh, look it up. Uh, or Bree is going to potentially demonstrate. No, I can't. <laughs> <laughs> that I was going to. Uh, see, Bree, you shouldn't give me this Bye. responsibility. <laughs> Bye. All right, so uh, go go into frog pose, right? So if you if you've never experienced frog pose. So I'm gonna I'm gonna cue you through it with with my voice. Uh, I can't demonstrate. So what I want you to do uh, is start in a wide-legged stance. So get, get into a really wide-legged stance. I want you to turn your heels out, turn your toes in. Okay, so you're in a huge wide-legged stance. Heels out, toes in. Um, so then what we're gonna do is we're gonna hinge from the hips and fold forward. Bring our hands to the ground. Okay, hands to the ground. Now we're going to walk our hands forward. We're just going to walk our hands all the way forward until our knees come down to the earth. So at this point, you should uh, feel and look a little awkward. Um, Your your knees are down on the earth. Your feet are wider than your knees. Okay, so there's a bend in your knees, but your feet are wider than your knees. If you need to bring them in slightly, do that. Okay, so here comes the, the fun part. What I want you to do is pull the belly button to the spine. There's a natural curvature in the lower back and it's like dipping down. I want you to try to remove that. So try to puff out the lower back just a little bit. Okay, pull the belly button into the spine and then we're gonna press the hips back towards the knees and say hello to your hips. And if you're still not feeling this, you might be doing it wrong because you're just listening to me and you don't have an example, or you have really open hips, and that's pretty awesome. Um, Get closer to the earth with your torso. So come down to your forearms, or come down to your chest. Everyone else, just find a seat. Let your hips open naturally. Close down the eyes, everyone. And just take notice of your breath where it's at just take notice if it's balanced or if it's uneven if you're in frog pose there's a chance that it has become shallow so you're at this point where you're just breathing to survive 
your breathing just in your lungs, in your heart area, in the upper chest. Okay, what I want you to do now is start to extend that breath. So everyone, no matter where you're at, no matter what position you're at, even if you're driving, everyone take a big inhale, long, long, big inhale, fill all the way up into the belly. Continue out the nose, we're gonna exhale. If you're familiar with the Ujjayi breath or the Ujjayi Pranayama, roughly translates to victorious life force, go ahead and activate that now. If not, don't worry about it. Just continue with this breath. Big inhales through the nose all the way into the belly. Big exhales out the nose. Make sure as we exhale, we're deflating from the belly. Okay, now I want you to direct your breath into your hips. If you're in frog pose on the inhales, maybe we come about halfway out of the pose just slightly, so release some of the tension on the hips. As we exhale, we, we sink deeper into this pose. So the hips make up a huge portion of the muscle group in the body. We have hip flexors, we have glutes, our quads run up into our hips, our hamstrings. So there's lots of room for asymmetry and there's also lots of room to store emotions in our hips. So at this point, you also might be getting a little emotional. You might be happy, you might be sad, you might be crying. I know many of people who cry in hip poses, hip openers like this. Wherever you're at, just continue to breathe. If you're in frog pose, what I want you to do on your inhale is slowly make your way out of it. Go ahead and pull the knees together, pull the feet together, and sit back on the heels. Go ahead and keep the eyes closed. Stay with this breath. Big inhales. Big exhales. There's an aftermath of frog pose. There's feeling, there's sensation after frog pose. Let's begin to let go of our breath control and just return back to a normal breathing pattern. And everyone, we're gonna take one big inhale through the nose. Loud, audible sigh out the mouth. <sighs> go ahead and blink the eyes open and return back to the episode. Thank you. Thank you. How are those hips feeling? Double whammy, breath and hips. Yes. After my run. <laughs> yeah. How'd you know? It's when you need it the most, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so um, you also mentioned, right? I think we're gonna talk a bit more about yoga today. Uh, but you, I, I told you earlier that my, I love the breath work because it does work. I feel like so much calmer. I feel like you're calmer. Mm -hmm. um, uh, I mentioned my allergies are killing me. Oh, yeah. You mentioned your allergies are killing you. Mm -hmm. And then you mentioned Ayurveda. Yeah. And I, I know very little about Ayurveda. I have a hilarious story about Ayurveda. Um, but 
I want to just turn it over to you. I'll, I'll share my story here in a moment, but I want to share over to you. Why would you bring up Ayurveda? Um, and for those listening, Ayurveda, A, Y, U, R, V, E, V, D, A. D, A, yeah. Yeah, A, Y, U, R, V, E, D, A. Day, day, D-A. D-A. <laughs> D-A. Uh, so, uh, why would you bring up Ayurveda uh, yeah. when, when well, I mentioned my allergies? I well, so Ayurveda is a sister science to yoga. <clears throat> they go hand in hand. One is um, so this is going to be Ayurveda is a lot more. It's almost like the doctor side of it or the um Mm -hmm. like physical medicine side of of yoga um yoga is a lot more energetic based even when we're using the physical postures um we're using the physical postures to move energy um so ayurveda it's composed of i mean there's so many different facets to it but i brought it up because i'm in a 800 hour yoga therapy training with the amrit institute And one of the modules is Ayurveda because it's an Ayurveda-informed yoga. Um, So I won't Mm -hmm. be an Ayurveda practitioner afterwards because there's way more than, say, like 50 hours of studying that you would need to be an Ayurveda practitioner. Mm -hmm. Uh, But it's allowing you to understand it. So not only can you bring it into the yoga or if you have a client who is seeing an Ayurvedic doctor you're able to um, support that. But uh, the modules I just finished were a lot about like our organs and tissues and how they all kind of work together. And the main concepts that they're working with are doshas. And so these are these qualities that we all have. There's three of them. There's vata, pitta, and kapha. And... So we have them all. We have certain ones that were born with more prominent, but throughout our experiences, things get out of balance. And we're looking to get back to balance of our kind of what we're born with. <clears throat> and why I brought it up with allergies is a few reasons. One is kind of like the phlegm and everything that, like I get really phlegmy with, um, allergies or I get this like runner's cough, which surprisingly I didn't get it this winter. I got it like late winter. Mm -hmm. Um, and last night in the module, they're like, get rid of your phlegm. (laughs) And so today running, I'm like spitting and just spitting and spitting spitting. (laughs) because it's our, it's our body getting rid of these toxins. So if you swallow that phlegm or you like, don't do a snot rocket, you're putting the toxins circulating it back into your body. Um, So I don't actually know specifically the allergies. I mean, it is going to be toxins entering your body. And, you know, everyone interacts differently with allergies. I personally, my reaction to allergies changed over time. I get a lot more lung uh, sensitivity, Mm -hmm. like not being able to breathe. Um, or feeling like I can't breathe with my lungs when they kick in. But I'm really excited to learn more because I do think there are some things I could probably do to balance out, mm-hmm. um, to s- maybe not get rid of the allergies, but at least lessen them. Because they'll, um, the kapha, which is kind of the more like sluggish and slow, like dense, It's an earth and water quality. Mm -hmm. Um, And that sounds like it's all bad stuff. It's not, it's not all bad. It's like luscious and there's a lot of great things to the kapha um, qualities, but that um, is our lungs are part of that. And so I actually, through this process, realized like how much potentially either I have kapha imbalance or that might be one of my more stronger doshas and maybe something's lacking because most of my like health stuff is related is like that phlegmy cough or bad allergies. I noticed Mm -hmm. most of my stuff in that arena. And so each of these doshas are responsible for different 
kind of parts of our body, I guess you could say. Right. Different processes. Yeah. So I think you, you, you really touched on it is, and I, and I've done very little Ayurveda and I had no clue what Ayurveda was until my yoga teacher training. Um, but really it's uh, with the allergies, it's just the balance. The way that, that she taught us was if you have allergies, you have an imbalance of something, Mm -hmm. something you are ingesting isn't working for you. If right. And, and you're supposed to change that and you're supposed to alter that. And and there's, there's probably way more science than I know about involved in this. Uh, and, and us talking about it for five minutes or however long we're about to talk about it, Mm -hmm. right. Is not going to do it justice. But yeah, so you have kapha, which is, what do you say, earth and water, right? Mm-hmm. And then you have pitta, which is fire, right? Fire and water. Fire. Yeah, and that's me. I'm mm-hmm. fire, if you can't tell. <laughs> um, and then uh, vata is... Air and right? ether. Air and ether, air and space. Um, well, the one thing I will say, you say you're, you're Pitta, but yep. you would also want to know, so there's like Prakriti, which is what you're born with. Mm-hmm. And then there's what you kind of fall into. So you could be, so they, they'll look a lot structurally um, at you to figure out kind of your, uh, what would it be? Yeah, your structural makeup. And then functional mm-hmm. has more ability to kind of just get altered and so you yeah. might be more pitta but in your personality but is that causing other things maybe there that's an imbalance of like what you Absolutely. were born with and mm-hmm. so what are what's coming up and that's what's really really cool about the science behind it yeah um yeah there, there's a lot to it it's, there's a lot to it but it's wild but it's also really fucking weird because <laughs> I'm going to share my story. Yeah, share your story. <laughs> so the this teacher who, who taught it, I, I have no, uh, I'm pretty sure. Oh, yeah. You know what? She's like an OR nurse. So like, and, and she talked about she she really loves the mixture of like functional yeah. medicine, like like Western medicine and right, like the Eastern Chinese type medicine. Mm-hmm. Um which is part of the Ayurvedic medicine, right? And uh, and she was talking about like one of the ways to get balanced, and uh, and like I I swear, so there were fifteen of us in our yoga teacher training, and I'm pretty sure all of us were like, "Is this for real? Like, is this lady playing a joke on us, or or what?" Um, and to this day, like we still joke about about it, and um, and and I'm sure it's real. I'm sure it's a real thing, but. Uh, it's so based on your dosha, um, right? Like you have to, right. So like me, I'm pizza, I'm fire. Like I run, like everything about my body is, is fire. Like I am always hot. My wife will hug me and she's like, you're blazing. Yeah. And like, like I'll be cold. Like I could be outside in the cold and I'll be cold, but my outside is just radiating heat. Yeah. And like, so you have to, um, know that and like when you use Ayurvedic medicine, you have to uh, make sure you're using the right Ayurvedic medicine for your your doshas. And again, I, I can't speak to this like at all mm-hmm. other than really what I'm doing, probably a terrible job at it. But so uh, the teacher, she explained to us this routine that she goes through monthly to like balance herself out. And um, based on your dosha, you have to use like some sort of oil and based on your dosha, it has to, it changes like it's sesame oil, olive oil or something mm-hmm. like that. And she was telling us like, she, she goes home, she gets like a sheet. She like puts a sheet on the floor. She gets naked and like rubs herself <laughs> in oil. And like, she just covers herself in whatever her oil is for her dosha. Mm-hmm. And then she just like hangs out on this sheet for, for, I don't even remember how long. But, and she was like, really like selling us, like, like telling us like, oh yeah, you should go home. And, you know, like we identified our main doshas and, yeah. you know, and, and, oh, go home and get this sesame oil and cover yourself in oil. <laughs> and like, and none of us did it. And, and again, for me, it was the first time I had ever heard about <laughs> Ayurvedic medicine. And I'm just like, huh? Like, you want me to do what? Yeah. And, and so I, I've never done it and maybe there's something to it, but, 
to to this day like we still joke about it because all of us were just like excuse me you want me to like i think i'm i'm not surprised like based on like what i know about yoga now i'm not surprised like they didn't bring in sheets and like like everyone get naked like we're doing this ayurvedic (laughs) cleanse and i I, yeah so I'm, i'm not surprised that didn't happen but uh yeah, so that's that's my story. Do you know anything about this process? That yeah, I'm it's Abhyanga, but it's okay. Um, it's a massage. It's it's not necessarily like a massage massage, mm-hmm. but I guess that's how she does it for herself. Mm-hmm. Um, <clears throat> so if you were to go get Abhyanga done by a, a Ayurvedic practitioner, they would mm-hmm. use oil, certain type of oil. Sesame is the one that works with every dosha. Okay. Um, because you're never trying to intensify a dosha. What you're doing is trying to soften the ones that are like more prominent Mm -hmm. to allow another one to come forward. Um, Mm. And so what's funny is your pitta and I think about your snow, right? Like you were doing the challenge where you jump in the snow, right? Um, That's probably the worst thing you can do for a pitta. Oh really? Because you're creating more fire. Yeah. So what's happening, like a pitta should not drink, no one should really drink ice water, but mm-hmm. that's what they say. Um, but like if a pitta were to drink ice, you can drink cold water. That's, that's all I drink is ice water. Oh my God. <laughs> so like you can drink, it, cold water is fine. Like do yeah. the cold water, but yeah. ice water, what happens is, <laughs> is that in order for you to process it, it has mm-hmm. to cool down or like, yeah. I mean, warm, warm up. Yep. And so you produce more fire inside of you hmm. to warm up the, the wa- ice water to a temperature that you can actually use it in your body. Oh, so by doing ice water, you, as a pitta, you're creating more and more fire inside of you. Oh, cr- funny. <laughs> that's crazy. So that's yeah, why like, the that's... science is like so fascinating because you're like, Oh, okay. Like I run hot, like I should cool off. And it's like, well, how does that work? You know, and um, mm-hmm. a lot of it's actually just managing um, this vata, which is the air and ether space. Is um, so all disease is related mm-hmm. to vata in some way, mm-hmm. um, and that's because too much air for say like a fire um, will well, it's that balance of like it can either way too much can could blow it out or it spreads it or Mm -hmm. not enough makes it go out. So there's like all Hmm. these things that how it interacts. Um, I don't know. It's interesting, but I forgot how I got. Oh, the Abhyanga. Yeah. I I wonder though, if it, if it like creates, like, is there like a craving? Like, cause like, I I get what you're saying. Like it creates more fire, but like, I like ice water is just like, what's good to me and like so is there like a craving yeah, like as a pitta do like i alcohol cre- once good for you i'm sorry say that again was was alcohol once good for you oh god no alcohol is <laughs> never good for me never was good <laughs> <laughs> i but, thought it was good for me but it, well it there de- you go <laughs> right? so you wasn't. think ice water is good for you <laughs> uh, it's 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 satisfying i mean well i think coke is good for me and like coca-cola people easy cola uh, leader of um, cola. a leader of cola um yeah so i yeah but I, yeah i, don't I mean know. there's worse to... things like i'm not like don't drink ice water no but, but that's just how it's working in your body is something right. to consider um yeah. If you haven't caught on, people, this is the hippie part of the hunter and the hippie. Lots podcast. of hippies. Today. Yes, lots of hippies. Probably today. all hippie. <laughs> yep. All right. So go back to Abhyanga. So Abhyanga is, yeah, it basically, it's kind of, it's like a massage, but it's not technically a massage, and you're, mm-hmm. um, you're just moving the oil in in a way that is, um. Yeah, like I, I don't even know because I just like learned it briefly. Mm-hmm. But you're, uh, it's usually performed by someone else. So that's what I was gonna say. Are fun. you rolling like, out the sheets tonight? She and... probably could. Maybe she was like <laughs> doing it on herself on her arms and like legs. But I, n- I've never heard of like you just like rolling your sheets. 
Oh yeah, she was like, like the way she made it sound was like, she was like, I get naked, I go, like she like her husband, she's like, yep, my husband knows, like this is, like my time, and like, yeah. I'm just, she's like, I get naked, and I just cover myself in this oil, and I was like, hey, we live. this is fucking strange <laughs> um if, if it feels less strange to get it done by someone maybe do that they won't let right. you get naked but i've gotten ayurvedic um massage mm -hmm. and i was in my underwear you know and so like but it was like abhyanga like they mm -hmm. they cover you they, they, oil like, they just like rub sesame oil yeah so they're, they're just pushing it like so they would be like pushing it up my you know, like up the mm -hmm. arm. Mm -hmm. um, so instead of like this deep tissue massage, it, it, it really is, I think, a combination of, I mean, just the oil has mm. a, a process within you that's helpful. And then just the movement hmm. of, I, I could look it up. I <laughs> feel like I'm <laughs> failing. This is, this is like been the most dense part of my training where I'm like, whoa. Cause I feel yeah. like I'm, I'm learning new languages cause everything is in Sanskrit and then, yeah, it's, it's very science, sciencey, mm -hmm. um, which is fascinating. I'm excited. I'm was like, I'm listening and, to this module over and over again. But. And there's a lot to like with essential oils with mm -hmm. it. Um, right. There's, you know, people, people make fun of essential oils with like, Oh, there's no science based on essentials. Yeah, there is. Mm -hmm. Um, it's, it's ancient, right? Like we don't study it now because right, we don't see it as this Western medicine. Like this pharmaceutical company didn't come up with this lavender essential oil, right? And, and make you, um, right? Like do their research on it. But there, there absolutely is science behind behind mm -hmm. it. And right, like lavender is for relaxing and, and sleeping. And right, like that's why there's teas, right? Like it goes back, you, it's, it's none of this, it hasn't, it wasn't snake oil or hocus pocus, right? Like you don't have these teas to make you feel certain ways, mm -hmm. right? And, and yeah, there's not essential oil in the tea, but you're using the product of mm -hmm. it, right? And essential oil is just the, the oil from whatever is in that tea, right? So lavender's a, a great one, right? Lavender's for relaxation and for sleep. And you have lavender teas, you have lavender essential oils. And and that goes on, right? Like mint. Mint is great for upset stomachs and right, clearing why do you think pepto Yeah, sciences. and and if you yeah, clear yeah, absolutely clearing up the sciences. And if you don't believe that uh that essential oils, right, or the the thing itself isn't used in science well, this is really easy. If you don't believe that, take a look at a lot of modern medicine. So you have Pepto-Bismol. Mm -hmm. um, if you haven't taken Pepto-Bismol, uh, it is a pink drink and it tastes like chalk and mint. Mm -hmm. And what does it do? It, it, it coats your stomach and, and helps heal your stomach. So there's an aspect of it that, you know, that chalkiness, that whatever that medicine is, is helping to coat your stomach and heal it. But then there's the mint in it too that is... Uh, providing relief as well um oregano is great for burns um and it's also make you uh smells like a greasy italian um i can say that because i'm a greasy italian and uh, it's hilarious whenever like I, I like sunburns you can put oregano oil on it and then everyone thinks that you're a big pasta dish to eat and... yeah. <laughs> God, i'm hungry already <laughs> right right uh but you know like there's and and it goes back to Right, I, I, and I'm gonna do my best at relating this to Ayurveda. When when we say when you're allergic to something, it's because you're imbalanced in something else. And and they go through. And again, this is not. The, I'll even say that this isn't the part that I paid attention. She lost me when she started talking about covering herself in oil. Um, but like you know, let's say you're you're missing or you're imbalanced and you don't have something. There's there's something that is directly opposite of that that you're supposed to go get. Right. And let's just call it oregano. I don't know what it is, but let's just call it oregano. Right. So you're going to put oregano in your food or when you're craving, you know, and it goes back to like if you're craving chocolate, you're really not craving chocolate. The body doesn't crave chocolate. Mm -hmm. you're, you're craving um, zinc, I think it is. Um, or you're craving sugar. Right. There's the, 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 your, your body is, isn't craving. Your body doesn't know what sugar is until you ingest sugar. Mm -hmm. um, but your body's imbalanced. And it goes the same for allergies. If you're you're having allergic reactions to even the environment, it's because right people say go take bee pollen, mm -hmm. local bee pollen or or honey, 
uh, local honey and that's supposed to help because it's supposed to help get it into your system and help balance you out and when you don't have it it's like it's like this attack on your body um but yeah that's that's the best that i can explain it but so my point is is that these essential oils right mm-hmm. there's a science behind it there's everything that you're talking about there's there is science mm-hmm. behind it and it's even prevalent in western society right it's not this hocus pocus and there's definitely something to it that we we should be and that's what i did like about her in what she was talking about is that she she was an or nurse Mm -hmm. that's one thing i do remember and i was like oh that's weird like you're this or nurse who's clearly sees the benefit of western medicine Mm -hmm. right like you're clearly they're not holding lavender essential oil under your nose to try to keep you out while they're cutting into your your take your appendix out so uh and she even said it she said there's there's definitely a balance and and we should that's where society should be moving is more towards right like bringing all of it together to yeah. make it i've met a lot of medical professionals who switch not switched but dove into more holistic practices and eastern medicine practices because of the being in the medical profession and mm-hmm. seeing the gaps or the pieces that are missing mm-hmm. from it. Um, you know, and I, I had a, I know one of my students, he was like, I used to use essential oils in uh, the rehab center, you know, when he was working with rehab patients for mm-hmm. brain injury and things like that. And this is one of my favorite things to bring up around like yoga and medicine. Mm-hmm. So I can't remember the name of the medical symbol, but it's the two snakes. Oh yeah. That the intertwine. Nurse's symbol. What is it called? Uh, I, I forget what it's called. It's so, the nurse's symbol though. Yeah. It's like, it's like what the old time nurses used to wear on their hat. Yeah. So there's two um, snakes that intertwine through each other. There's like wings that kind of come off the top and then there's like a, a pole that goes to the center of the snakes. In yoga, we have a thing called Ida and Pingala. And Ida is like the cooling, the calm. So this would be like in Chinese medicine, yin, um, the moon. It's kind of the negative charge. And Mm -hmm. then Pingala is fire. Uh, It'd be yang and the sun. And... Ida and Pingala are the nadis, and they are the things that intertwine, just like those snakes. Mm-hmm. Um, they see it in the body through our spine, which creates our chakra centers. And when those are fully in balance, our shashumna, which runs up our spine, so that pull that goes through the middle of the snakes in the medical symbol, is our shashumna. So when Ida and Pingala are balanced, we have a... F- a healthy, free-flowing energy through our spine or through our chakra, through our sh- shashumna. And then like those wings, right, is this kind of connection back to source. And so this symbol <laughs> has been around for eons before, mm-hmm. but there's, it's like, that's where I'm always like, the yogis knew something more than, right. you know, we they didn't have the, modern science to prove it but they're saying the same things this idea of balance you know and so it's like a when there's too much pingala people are anxious when there's Mm -hmm. too much ida people are depressed and so we we go between the two we intertwine this all is a dance a play together but when we're our most healthiest right and the symbol for health medicine is this exact symbol is when those things are balanced and Mm -hmm. I just love that example because, um, like anyone who's science-based is like, well, where'd they get that? Because this is what it actually means. Right. (laughs) Um, and the third eye, that's another one that's really fascinating because the third eye is about Mm -hmm. like an inch or so in from the center of the forehead and it goes into your mid brain, which is Mm -hmm. where fight or flight lives. It's the HPA access, uh, and the pineal gland. So it's where we, our circadian rhythm is managed all all of our hormone balance is managed and so again yogis have 
have been bringing awareness to the third eye, like, right, for this feeling of peace. Well, yep. <laughs> that's exactly where the fight or flight is being managed, right? Like, right. It's, it's just super cool when you... And, and it's, but it's housed, it's housed from, so like you're saying, it goes to the center, but what is connected to the center of the brain, the spine, mm -hmm. and then the spine goes down and your vagus nerve, mm -hmm. right, is what also controls your central nervous system, which is mm -hmm. part of the fight or flight. So again, it goes back up that spine, like mm -hmm. you're saying, taking that interweaving. So there's, there's so much to exactly what you're saying, right, mm -hmm. with... Right. Like, yeah, getting getting the mind right, what you're taking in up here. Right. What's going on throughout the body, throughout the chakras. Um, so, yeah, I. And when I you said you were talking about in the breathing mm -hmm. into our hips and, you know, like the emotions coming up at the hips, the second mm -hmm. chakra is the center of the pelvis. Yep. Um, and that's our that's our like personal relationships. It's sexuality, it's sensuality, it's creativity. Yep. Um, so, yeah, that's where our, our yeah. emotions are held in that second. That's exactly where it's held yep. when you think about chakras, you know. Yep. I try to, you know, it's funny. I, I, I don't I'm not going to say dumb it down, but I, I try to make yoga less hippie ish. Mm -hmm. Right. And I think we've talked about this before. Right. And that's because I'm trying to make it more accessible. When you start talking about a lot of the stuff we're talking about today, right? When you start talking about chakras, like people, you lose people. Mm -hmm. Like for some reason, people are just like, oh, yeah, no. Right. Because again, you can't see, you can't touch, you can't feel, it, you can't operate on it. Um, and, and, and you lose people. Mm -hmm. um, so, but what you can do is you can, you can show them how they exist. Mm -hmm. And, and it's amazing, like, you know, by making someone breathe into their hips and then they start releasing these emotions, right? Like it's, it's powerful. And then, then they're like, oh, what was that? Right. And then they start asking questions mm -hmm. and, and you can absolutely start breaking it down like you just did. Yeah. We, um, a lot of my work, especially with yoga nidra is the science gets people in. I say, this is anyone who's one of my clients or students, like broken record but mm -hmm. the science is what gets them in the experience is what keeps them in and yep. so a lot of times I have to step forward I have to move with science just so people will listen but then yeah. once they start experiencing it they they don't give a sh shit about the science anymore right. <laughs> it's like oh <laughs> okay right and that's the thing is like once you know, and, and I'm not religious at all. And, and, and I think there's, there's something to that, right? That you have these people who like, who have experienced God mm -hmm. and who are we to say that they haven't, mm -hmm. right? And maybe they've experienced something that has brought them closer to a God, their God, multiple gods, whatever, right? That is. Mm -hmm. And, and that's the thing, like, yeah, you, science goes far. Right. Like science shows you a lot. Science. Right. Science is real. Uh, right. Science is real. But but Who's so science is, is real. Though? <laughs> yeah. Just uh, but experience shows you. Right. Like it exposes. Right. Science. It, it you know, when the, the first time I ever realized how it's funny that we talked about pigeon pose, the first time I ever realized how powerful my breath was was in pigeon pose and and it was when I first started not when I first started but like probably like a year in and and I couldn't I couldn't lie down right mm -hmm. I couldn't fully deepen into my pigeon pose and uh and and my teacher was like cueing me like sort of like what I did with you like come halfway out of the pose breathe in sink deeper into it come halfway mm -hmm. out sink deeper into it and and it was just that it was like that for like three or four minutes in just one side and by the end of that i was lying completely flat mm -hmm. i started like forearms on blocks and just the power of the breath and the power of just using the breath to breathe into my hips mm -hmm. and and fire up the the chakra and Right. Like allow whatever was going on in there to do the work um, was just amazing. So you can talk about it. Right. You can tell people how powerful their breath is. But when they experience it, there's something there. Mm -hmm. And it's it's pretty awesome. Yeah. Ca, ca, caudacious. Ca, C-A-D. 
D-U-C-E-U-S. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, the medical symbol. I don't know uh-huh. how to say that word. <laughs> uh, but yeah, it's it's the School of Nursing and most medical organizations use it. Uh, it, or in Greek mythology, it's it's known as the staff of Hermes, uh, who's the messenger god or the god of medicine. God of medicine, yeah. Yeah, um, yeah. I'm sure there's a whole bunch of research uh, into it, but I I know you asked what <laughs> the name was, and I was like, I have to look this up now. Yeah, I feel like I always ask, whenever I talk about it, I ask, and then I never remember it. No, like, yeah. well, how are you gonna remember that name? I Science. can't even say it. Cause, yeah, science. <laughs> Snake Science staff isn't wings. Real? Right. <laughs> oh, uh. <man. laughs> oh, no, it's it's so interesting. I you know, when you're talking about right, you say chakras and people just like mm, tune out like uh, mm-hmm. and but showing them it, how can we bring it to them in a different way and it's been really fascinating to reflect on my yoga teaching journey because mm-hmm. um, I do think as a practitioner it's always it's different than teaching um, yep. because I have di- like you know I've, I I mean this summary is a perfect example we were talking about what is yoga unit you, you mm-hmm. know we we do our self studies, whatever that looks like. And it's not always stuff we bring to our classes because I think for both of us wanting to make it more approachable. Yeah. I have gone off the deep end though. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I, I just I do finally, it. I do it in some classes. But I finally was like, I don't care anymore. Mm-hmm. <laughs> like that is your, you know, like, I mean, it, and it's more of just because I'm so... I'm just over yoga being a, f- a fitness workout, mm-hmm. you know? And yeah. I think it has been, I, I bring in different, I would bring in different philosophies. So I still do. It's not just yoga. I'll bring in something from a book I'm reading or something from the I Ching, you know? Mm-hmm. Um, but I just, so much is of the power of the practice is lost by not, bringing those teachings in and, and I, and I think when you say this, you know, you're like, I'm not religious. I, I even reflect on my own relationship with religion. I was very like turned off by it. Mm -hmm. Um, and it's fascinating to see as my spiritual practice has deepened and I've opened myself up to even just bringing those practices more into my classes. Like, how that's changed my relationship with religion. And it, it comes back to that. All of these, they're all saying the same thing. They're saying it differently and it's getting interpreted differently. Mm-hmm. Um, but I don't know what I was going to say there. I totally lost my train of thought, but um, yeah, I, I just recently, and I think it's also like I have this lineage that I'm studying that I'm doing my 800 hour with is, just there, there's so much depth to it and there mm-hmm. again there's so much potency to it that it's like I feel I'm doing a disservice by not sharing it and I'm not sharing it in a way where this is what religion I think made me like ooh, is like mm-hmm. when you have the people who try to force it on you right yeah. like they say you have to believe this or not I don't care if you believe what I'm saying or not but that doesn't mean I'm not gonna say it and I didn't mm-hmm. I think I was afraid to turn people off right to lose them but people are going to hear what they need to hear when they need to hear it and so i could not say that and have the same effect you know absolutely yeah i feel so much more freed now that i've been able to bring more of that depth into it um Mm -hmm. and oh and that's how i started it's because it's like it became a fitness workout for everyone and it's it's just so much more than that. And as teachers, if we're not making it more than a fitness workout, we're really doing a disservice to the, to the practice. Absolutely. Yeah. So first off, I, I do want to address something you said and, and I know, right. Like your thoughts are exactly what you said. Right? Mm-hmm. You're, you're not going to say that, but you're also, I, and you've said it on other episodes. It's like, if this is what gets you in the door, then great. Right. Mm-hmm. 
like let's get you in the door. But, uh, and I've had multiple students tell me like, Oh, I just, I just came here for a workout. And now they're like lifelong students. Yeah. They've been practicing with me for three years and they're like, I don't even care if I sweat. And I'm yeah. like, good. Like, it's not the point. Like, Hey, if you sweat, great. Like that's, that's awesome. Right. Like, please like, yes, get in the sweat. Like, yes, you came here to get flexible. Um, that's a whole nother issue. I had someone just recently, uh, Alan, I need yoga. I, I need to get flexible. I keep <laughs> hyper extending. I keep getting hyper extension injuries. Wait, then you don't need flexibility. Like over flexibility. Well, yeah. And that's what I said. I was like, well, then you don't need flexibility. Like you need strength. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, so we, we don't even know what we don't know. Like we don't even know, like we are like, Oh, I'm hyper flexible. I need you. Like, you know, and, and people are telling, we're telling this person, you should try yoga mm-hmm. and no, yes, you need yoga, but you don't need it because you're, you're, you need more flexibility. Mm-hmm. Right? Flexibility is actually your problem. Um, and I've talked about that in other episodes too. Um, right. We need mobility, flexibility, and strength. And if you're over, if you're hyperextending, you don't need flexibility. You're good. You are plenty flexible. We need to work on getting you stronger. Um, but yeah, you're, you're right. Like I, like I, I've actually started, I haven't, I haven't gone off the deep end where like that's, that's it. Cause I still want to, um, I feel like I can say, I feel like maybe I can't say it all the time. Cause I, I sometimes I'm at a loss for words, but I, I need to figure out a way to say what's off the deep end in the shallow end or like put some floaties on people and then push them off into the deep end and like have them figure it out. Mm -hmm. Like, so I, I, I appreciate what you're saying because what you're saying is so true. Like there's times and sometimes in my classes, I'm like, you know what? Fuck it. Like I'm going to talk to you today about your locks, your bondas and the importance of them. And, and I know people are probably like, huh? Like we're doing what we're locking, what energy, how, by what my sphincter, what, like, (laughs) you know, like people are just, you know, again, they're going to hear what they're, what they're going to want to hear when they need to hear it. And you have to put it out there. But my thought is how can I make it, how can I make it so that more people are going to hear it? Mm -hmm. And how can I, you know, Ashtanga yoga is the primary form of yoga that like I like learned with. And if you've been to my classes and you've been to Ashtanga, you'll, I've had people say to me like, Oh, you went to Ashtanga. Like you, like you have an Ashtanga background because my, my classes are very much Ashtanga based, except I actually care about your body. Um, uh, where I feel like Ashtanga, I'm sure they care about their bodies. Um, but it doesn't seem like it. Uh, Ashtanga is really like violent. It's like a violent yoga. I call it violent yoga. Ashtanga is so mean. Um, but yeah, like I think that like you have to put put a pretty bow on it in a way that is like here, like you you want to open this, you want to understand it, you want to read it. And yeah, and it's still a task cuz it doesn't get everyone. You know, but it's funny cuz I was so hesitant to to and again, I'm I still again, I bring in other philosophies. I'm not just, Mm -hmm. you know, doing yogic philosophies, but I have been taking on a little more education components into my classes. And and it's very, I still think it has a little bit of bow and it's softer, but it's like my gateway into then maybe talking about a little more esoteric type stuff. Mm -hmm. I'm fascinated though, by how well received it is. And so I see that as like, wow, my mind was actually creating these stories about what people will be turned off by and not Mm -hmm. turned off by. And what I think is really significant is, and I'm not tooting my own horn, I'm speaking for like even you, Mm -hmm. is just who we are as people. And because we connect with the people who are coming to our classes, when we can bring in that kind of esoteric, like off the deep end stuff, it's not scary or like yep. what the heck because they've connected with us as people and they're like oh they're you know they 
like he hunts. Like, yeah, they're, they're normal. Like they're they're normal. Yeah, she's I can like, listen to what they're fun. saying. Like, right, right. Okay, <laughs> she's yeah. not just like sitting and meditating all day, right? You know, right. and I think that's yeah. really where it's like, no, I'm I'm embodying this, mm-hmm. right? Like I'm embodying that you can what this epi- this podcast is about. I'm embodying that you can be more than one thing. The that like esoteric isn't just for the hippie or the monk or it it can be you see how that exists in your own life i mean Mm -hmm. they're all just questions of of that lead us into personal growth and in whatever we're wanting to grow in yeah 100 percent. and and i and i want to bring up politics really quick we don't have to dive into it but i i do because exactly what you're saying I really feel like, you know, in, in the political climate that we've had in the last few years and, and probably even now, we've, we've very much become the party. Mm-hmm. Or, no, we haven't. No, that's a lie. We haven't become the party. We, we think we've become the party. Mm-hmm. And, and we think that we've become, well, I'm a Democrat. And, and I'm a Republican and because I'm a Democrat, this is, this is everything that I have to agree with and, and go, go with, with the party. And, and while I'm a Republican and this is everything that, that I have to agree with and, and go with where there's the, the, the things that make up or that we believe make up these party lines are, are exactly that, right? They're the hunter and the hippie, mm-hmm. right? The, the hunter is conservative for some reason. I have no clue why. Um, right. And then the like hippie. conserving land. <laughs> right, right. Yeah. Yeah. The, the hunter is conservative and the hippie is, is, is liberal. And, and I, and that's part of also like, I want our discussions and we've had, um, we've had discussions on our show that aren't politically charged, but are made politically charged outside of our show. Mm. And, and I've even had to like say, and you've had to say like, Hey, this isn't a right or left thing. This is just mm-hmm. a thing. And like our, the media and, and people make us believe that they're right or left, but um, like you can be both. You like, you're not a terrible, right? If you're, if you consider yourself a Democrat or a liberal you can't right, and, and then you look at hunting. You're like, well, I can't be a hunter because I'm a Democrat. Mm-hmm. Well, that's just stupid, right? I'm not calling you stupid, but that idea is stupid that you can't be that other thing, right? Mm-hmm. Because they're not. It doesn't say like, well, if you're a hunter, you have to be a Republican. Like, no, mm-hmm. you know, and and if you're a hippie, you have to be a liberal. Like, no, like we, why can't we look at at the the issues, right? Why can't we look at the topic, the the thing, and and this just goes back to our episode. Like, why 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 is it that I have to look at if I'm like I'm all in on Western medicine? No, like there's Western medicine that's been terrible for us, mm-hmm. right? Like how can right there's Western medicine that's been great for us? It's extended our our life capacity, our our life expectancy mm-hmm. by, I mean, what like an old person you know thousands of years ago was what like 22 i think if you lived to like 22 you lived like a long meaningful life mm-hmm. you had kings at like 12 and like <laughs> marriages and you know i think queens i forget there was a queen i think there was like a queen who like ruled the land from like eight years old or something like that it's something ridiculous but my, my point is is like we gotta move away from this is this this is this whether it be political whether it be um you know, yoga based, science based, like no science still exists, but then there's the experience and mm. hippies still exist. And then there's hunting. And, and I, I even argue that hunting is part of being a hippie, but that's a different. Topic, I, you but. know, it's funny. I definitely, I think there's a lot that has fallen into those political categories, but I also think it's fascinating. I think we've actually just turned into, um, uh, us and them, culture versus and so politics tends to be where we do an us mm-hmm. and them yeah um or maybe it's like an uh, a something in an anti or it's the polarization right so yep. we've created well we've moved the natural polarization into conflicting duality mm-hmm. and 
and because I, I do think what's fascinating is with cur with the pandemic, people kind of drew said, you know, anti maskers are conservative and that, but yeah. I, I actually there was so much blurring of that. Mm -hmm. The two categories were simply anti maskers and maskers. Yeah. Right. Yep, so 100%. And they didn't fall into those categories. And I think right. it was very evident. I mean, I know a lot of like very extreme liberals who were like, this is BS, like all of this. And then I know a yep. lot of extreme conservatives that wouldn't go no, like wear their mask all the time, you know? And yeah. And then also, and like, same with the vaccine. Just I yeah, was gonna yep. say that was yeah. my next part. Yeah, was, like, yeah. So the thing is, it's not falling into political categories. Mm -hmm. It's you're either if you're not up for the if you're not getting the vaccine, you're an anti-vaxer. Right. If you're not if you in order to not be racist, you have to be anti-racist. Right. In order to be, you're either a hunter or you're anti-hunter. Right. Like. Yeah. We we're like, you have to be one or the other that we've mm -hmm. actually like, even beyond politics, yeah. we've just become this culture of like, you're, you're either for it or you're or, against it. Yeah. You're not like somewhere in the middle or like open to evolve or like, which is, I support this part of it, right. but not this part of it. Like, which is really interesting because <laughs> the, the, what you've just said is actually two separate coins, right? Mm -hmm. Cause when you think about opposites, the, the opposite of a hunter isn't an anti hunter. The opposite of a hunter is someone who doesn't hunt, mm -hmm. right? That's the same coin, right? Mm -hmm. So you have your heads, you have your tails, you have your hunter, you have your non-hunter. You don't have an anti-hunter, mm -hmm. right? That's a totally separate coin, right? So you have a you have a, a vaxxer or someone who gets vaccines, which I, I'm not even getting <laughs> because I don't even understand this part. Of this, this right, like, and and then you have someone who doesn't get vaccines, not an anti-vaxxer. Yeah. And typically, like you said, typically an anti-vaxxer is way left. Yeah. Right. Like typically, right. Like it's that hippie. I, I don't need, mm -hmm. I don't need a vaccine. My kids aren't getting vaccines. And you see a lot of uh, anti-vaxxers in Boulder and Boulder actually has become such a, uh, I have a funny story when I moved here. So Boulder has become really like the, the, the uh what am i trying to say like the uh the image for anti-vaxxers um because when i when i moved here uh i used to work with small businesses i used to work with doctor's offices and uh i was in a doctor's office talking to a doctor uh, he was a pediatrician actually and you know they deal a lot with vaccines and uh he's like oh where where you know i told him that i just moved here and he's like oh where'd you move where'd, where'd you move to and I told them where I live. I, I live in Erie, Colorado. And for everyone who doesn't know the geography of this, so I live in Erie, Colorado. I live in Boulder County, mm -hmm. um, but I don't live in Boulder. And um, the doctor says to me, he's like, oh, so you love Boulder, but you believe in vaccines. <laughs> and I just, I laughed, right? Like, because it, Boulder has right? Like I, I live in Boulder County, but I'm far enough removed from Boulder. And that's absolutely the vibe that you get from where I live is like, we're, we're pretty balanced here. Like mm -hmm. we're pretty center. Um, you know, there's definitely politically left and right, you know, topics in, in our town, um, but we're pretty center. And that's what I look for um, in, in living, right? I want both. I, I want to see both because mm -hmm. there's Right. If, if, if you have a friend that is far right, right, there is something that that friend is doing that is way left. Okay. I promise you, right. There 100% is something that they're, if they say, right, no one is, is again, right. No one is their party. Mm -hmm. And if you have someone that's far left, there's, there's absolutely something that they're doing. They definitely own a gun. Right. Right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, or right. Like there, there's something that they do, right. They have a savings account. Right. Like they, they have their iPhone, right. There's something that they're doing that, that is, you know, in inherently right. If that's how we're going to apply it. Um, so it's just, it's funny, like the, the labels and you're, you're so right. We, we did. And I, I do it right. I'm, I'll be the first one to admit. I do it. I absolutely do it. Right. We all do it. Um, right. We we're going through like all this confirmation bias and everyone has biases and everyone's racist and, I do believe everyone's biased, uh, but I don't think there's a fix for it because that's just 
who we are. That's what we are as people. The fix for it is having a conversation mm -hmm. and like being open to talking to people about their thoughts and their views and how they're raised and things that they've experienced in life and understanding why they have that bias. Right. And I think that's how we, I don't think we'll ever beat it, but that's how we beat it is like yeah. understanding. Hey, Oh, you're biased. Yeah, we all are. Like we all have a bias and, um, fuck, where was I going with this one? I had a fucking point. Damn it. Maybe it'll come back. Well, uh, it's funny you say that. Cause that's, I think about that's what the yoga, the yoga is, mm -hmm. is our mind. We, we all have human minds. Yeah. And what our human minds do are take past experiences mm -hmm. and create a meaning to our present based on past experience. That's bias. Yeah. Yeah. So we can't stop it from mm -hmm. happening, but we can stop act, but how we act on it is one yeah. thing that we can shift. And then how we judge or feel about other people who had have had different experience than us creating a different bias for themselves in this moment. Yeah. Right. Like I think what it is is what you're saying is spot on is the conversations. And it's like, we're going to have our bias because that's what we do. That's what our minds do. Mm -hmm. But can we stop judging, shaming, or making something yeah. different than ours bad? So that's the, yep. the conflicting duality. Isn't that there's, it's, it's just that, there's people who hunt and there's people who don't hunt, mm -hmm. right? There's, and then, we don't people need who, this. and then there's people who are against hunting, you know, right. but it's, and I'm not going to sit and I'm not going to shame or judge or right. say that this person is wrong and this is right. And you're mm -hmm. bad and you're good. But what I'll say this, I'll say this is wrong, right? We have to stop with the, with the shaming. That's what's wrong mm -hmm. is we have to stop with the, the name calling calling someone a racist has implications mm -hmm. and and it has implications on the person you're saying it to it has implications on yourself the person saying it mm -hmm. right like when we say those types of things those are very strong words mm -hmm. right those are very strong words that are very hard to prove right to to call someone something so derogatory Right. And, and, and even right. Like to, to call them anything, to call them a bigot, to call them a racist, to call them an anti-vaxxer, right. Is, is not, it's, it's not the conversation, mm -hmm. right. It's not giving humanity a chance. It's, it's you feeling so righteous that you've, you've defined what this is, what this one thing is. And, and you are now, applying it to everyone and and just trying to like bring it back to topic and stand topic is you know you and sa you saying oh you're a hippie and and that doesn't work right that some people think being called a hippie is derogatory and mm -hmm. right like why aren't we just having the conversation right some people being called a conservative i have i have a lot of conservative views mm -hmm. right i do um but when, when, when I'm called a conservative, I'm like, ew, mm -hmm. right? Like, oh, that's, that's not, that's not who I am. That doesn't define me. I have conservative views, mm -hmm. right? But I also have very liberal views. But if you were to call me liberal, I'd be like, ew, too, mm -hmm. right? So it's, right, like, because I, I think they're both gross, mm -hmm. right? Like, I think the, or the idea of, like, being just one or the other, mm -hmm. and that's exactly why we did this. That's why we, we, that's why we are the hunter and the hippie. Yeah is because we wanted to talk about be it politics, be it yoga, be it right. Like we want to give people a taste of like, okay. Hey, like, yeah, you've heard us talk about for nine episodes now, accountability, self care, right. All this stuff, right. Hunting, killing things. Uh, I don't even remember like everything that we've talked about. Um, gender, right? roles. We, gender roles, right. Um, we've talked about yoga. We're talking about yoga more. Like we want to give you what, is actually going on in life mm -hmm. right and to say that you're just one thing it's just it's crazy to me to be like oh i'm i'm this well no, and not. that's for me that's yoga like that mm -hmm. is the yoga is we're none of them mm -hmm. we're actually none of them mm -hmm. those are just labels and those are just roles that we play 
Yeah. But we aren't any of them. And this is the esoteric yeah. part that we're going to. There's something deeper beneath the roles that we play every single mm-hmm. day. And our, our yeah. suffering and our Absolutely. pain is a separation from that inner truth. And for a religious person, it could be God. For someone who's not, you know, it could be peace, that sense of trust in yourself, um, of something deep inside, um, ease, the source, light, whatever it might be. Um, that's always there, Mm -hmm. but we get so wrapped up in identity in the roles that we play these labels and Mm -hmm. labeling ourselves to then label others and then Mm -hmm. have personal preference. And it's not bad to have personal preference, but it's that control. Like it's, it's when you say this is wrong or bad and Mm -hmm. the role that I play is right. You know, that righteousness that you were mentioning, um, they're all temporary. Like what, what were you before you were a parent? Mm -hmm. It's like, no, you're just playing the role of parent right now. Yeah. I remembered a a point that I was going to make is that, is that I do it too. When I said like, I do it too, is I, I lay, I I label and I, and I try to catch myself like Mm -hmm. just with this, with, with coronavirus and the vaccine and the masks and, and all that. It's I've, with the vaccine coming out, I have, I have family and friends on, on both sides, all throughout the spectrum, far left, far right, in the middle, right? Moderate, moderate on both sides. And, and, and people that have gotten the vaccine, I was like, oh, that's weird. Like, I totally thought you weren't going to get it. Yeah. And like, and that's more of like the right. Like, I'm like, oh yeah, I totally thought... Like you are not going to get this vaccine. Mm -hmm. And then there's like people on the left that, you know, same thing that are, you know, totally Mm anti-mask. And I'm like, Oh, that's weird. And, and again, that's me judging. Right. And, and that's, I think one of the first, I don't want to say like the first steps is just like, just being honest with ourselves that like, yeah, we have these biases and Mm -hmm. that's cool. And like, and, and my thought is then to go to have the conversation is, Mm -hmm. Oh, why do you feel that way? Oh, why'd you, why'd you get the vaccine? And, uh, and I'll, I'll share this real quick. The, the person that got the vaccine, one of the people that got the vaccine that I th- immediately thought that like immediately when they like did their, I, I don't think the vaccine works unless you post your card on social media. <laughs> I'm not sure if that's sure or not, uh, but I'm pretty sure, uh, that's how that works. That's science. Right. Uh, but like the person posted their card on social media and I was like, Oh, that's odd you're right. I didn't think you were going to get the vaccine. And, and then I asked, I was like, I asked, I said, Oh, why did you get the vaccine? And he, he works as, uh, he works in the funeral business, Mm -hmm. uh, in New York where a lot of deaths have happened because of coronavirus. Uh, So he sells, uh, like cemetery plots. Mm -hmm. And he was like, I've seen so many people die and so many people that couldn't be there for their families through this pandemic and i'm hoping this is the light at the end of the tunnel mm-hmm. for us and i was like wow that's fucking powerful mm-hmm. like and that was that that's their experience mm-hmm. and, and so is he wrong for that experience no and i was like and i was just like holy shit like mm-hmm. that's crazy like he cries with these families you know, the conversation went deep and he's he's the he's the only one right like in this pandemic um, I had, I've had family members die during this pandemic of coronavirus, uh, and of not coronavirus. And, uh, and there's many scenarios where the, the person who died was either in alone in a hospital without any family by their bed. Mm-hmm. And they died because right of our lockdowns, which I think are bullshit. Um, I'm not going to get into that, but I am going to say they're bullshit. Uh, uh, right. Died alone in the hospital. Um, no funerals their their one significant other or their one family member had had to make all the funeral arrangements because they're not allowed to gather um right we've put all these 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 restrictions and and that's that person's story is and they've seen it firsthand and they've lived it and it doesn't matter right to our point about science it doesn't matter what the science says mm-hmm that's this person's experience Mm -hmm. and we can't take that from that person. 
and to to try to like i i mean after you hear their story what can you say you're gonna call them an anti-vaxxer right if you didn't want it right like you're gonna call them a name you're gonna call them racist because their story is doesn't fit to your standards mm -hmm. i don't know that's my thought i think we're a little off topic but no it's the i yeah. mean yeah. yoga means union mm -hmm. yeah <laughs> and so yoga means union um everything yeah the polar the pole the polarities mm -hmm. all as one yep not not separating it's not union of just this kind of person who believes the same mm -hmm. thing as me yep it is union of all of the differences of all the constellation mm -hmm. of, of hu humans and beings and animals and nature it's it's it is all of it, it is interconnected interdependent mm -hmm. it's all one it is the union of inhale and exhale which are the polarities Pol right? right like you have in order for one to be around you have to have the other mm -hmm. and that applies to life and and yeah that's that's what a big thing that yoga has taught me is like people have their stories and they're allowed to mm -hmm. and it doesn't just because your thoughts or your science or your your beliefs go against it doesn't mean that they're wrong. It doesn't mean that we should shame them or any of that. And all of our pain and suffering is mm -hmm. resistance yeah. to it's the natural holding polarities. On. Holding on. It's that grip that we get it's on the, the rope. It's a grip or ignoring, pulling. right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. it's, that, it's that attachment or aversion. Mm -hmm. um to to nature yep so what yeah. does yoga mean to you i just i just dropped yeah. a bomb <laughs> there it is yeah um that's what it is i mean that's mm -hmm. what the practice is that is what um what i love about again this lineage that i've been diving deeper into different from what i started my yoga training with I've done a lot of different trainings and mentorships. And now with the yoga therapy program, it's through the Amrit Institute. And it's really, it's the reason I went into it is because of my own experience with it and deep connection to it. Mm -hmm. And, <clears throat> and it, it's putting that, putting it back into your own hands. Um, I mean, we've talked about just, in this episode, people's kind of lack of body awareness. Mm -hmm. uh, and that is a lot of what yoga brings you into what's really happening right now. Um, so the mind is everywhere, but here, mm -hmm. um, the mind is in the past because it's defining what you're experiencing now based on something you learned or experienced in the past. Is that real? The yeah. experience was real, but it's not sure. real in this moment. Mm -hmm. And so the practice of yoga brings you right into breath, which is real. It's this moment. And then sensation. Because if you can just feel sensation without the commentary of the mind, mm -hmm. that's where we're in presence. Absolutely. We're, we're pulling into what is actually real. Um, and again, the only moment we can ever experience is, is the present moment. Yeah. And when we're in that moment, there's freedom, mm -hmm. right? There's, you lose the name calling, you lose the judging, right? You, you just, you start to think, oh, that's, that's a, that's a different thought. That's a different concept, mm -hmm. right? There's, there's freedom to explore, right? When you don't have your truths. I always, I always like to talk about, right, there's two types of truth. So there's big T truth and then there's little T truth. And and most of what, right, we, we, we often confuse the few, and all of us do this, right? It's, a, it's an overgeneralization, but it's not, right? It's everyone does this. Mm -hmm. We often believe our little T truths are big T truths. Mm -hmm. and, and that goes back to everything that we've talked about. And just we have to, you know, yoga has brought, my realization to everything's little teacher, mostly everything is little teacher. Mm -hmm. And that it, it's doesn't, you know, it's, 
it does exist and it doesn't exist and that's your way of seeing it and someone else has a different way of seeing it and mm-hmm. how can we see it differently and you know how are we going to be in that moment and just be for that person and when we i feel like when we're there we're not we're supportive right we're supportive we're we we are connected to right it's that union again we're connected to other people we're connected to nature we're connected to mother earth and we want to right because i I had a friend uh i think this relates hopefully it relates i had a friend who just (laughs) asked me uh are do you believe people are inherently evil that's that question yeah (laughs) and 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 he he was baiting me because he had an experience just recently Mm -hmm. where that's what he believed Mm -hmm. and um, and, and my response immediately, I didn't even have to think about it. My response immediately was no, people are inherently good. Mm-hmm. And I truly believe that. Mm-hmm. Right. And, and it, I've seen evil, I've seen bad things happen. And, um, I think that when you're in the moment though, no one's trying to do anything bad. Right. When you're in the moment, you're just trying to understand, you're trying to breathe. You're not taking your past experiences and bringing it to there, right. To the, the, that moment, you're not looking into the future and bringing it to the moment. You're just exploring that moment and what it is and what that sensation is. And it's hard to do. I'm not saying, right. This is simple. It's not easy. Mm-hmm. And, you know, so that, a question of, you know, do you think people, I think people are inherently good. Uh, and then I had this conversation deeper with other people uh, i'll ask you what your thoughts are potentially if you want to get into that but i uh people uh, a few of my other friends were like people are opportunistic mm. and i don't think it's evil um and i think opportunistic i think people can be opportunistic uh but yeah i think people are inherently good i think no one does something and even if you look at and I use this as an example, and I don't know if I can explain it well enough, but even when you look at, like, the mafia, um, like, the Italian mafia, like, back east, Mm -hmm. like, when when it was a big deal, yeah, they were killing people, and they were running drugs, and, you know, they were running rackets to to do their business, but, and I'm not justifying their actions in what I'm about to say, but what they thought they were doing, they thought they were doing good for their community and their Mm -hmm. people, Right. It was never malicious. It was never intended to be malicious. And they killed people because they went against what they thought was good. Mm-hmm. Um, so, yeah, I think and I do think that there's inherently bad people out there. Right. Who are just going to do. But I think that's the exception. Mm-hmm. And I think I think the majority of people are inherently good. What are, what are your thoughts? Well, you know my dharma from last, if you didn't listen to the last episode, my dharma is to see the Mm -hmm. best in people. And so Mm -hmm. I think that in itself just kind of sets me into, I I believe that people are inherently good. And even the ones that you said, small percentage are inherently bad. I don't, I don't believe inherently. I don't Mm -hmm. believe the T, the big T truth Mm -hmm. of all of us is, is, is that peace, is that oneness. And it's when we lose that, when we get distracted from it, when we forget about it, um, when we get so absorbed in the unreality is when people do bad things to other people. Yep. Um, when we act out of alignment with the big T truth. Mm-hmm. Is that, for me, the big T truth is, is that oneness is the source, is peace. And yep. that's always, that's the only thing in us that's permanent. Yeah. Everything else is impermanent. Our body, Absolutely. my body looks different mm-hmm. than it did 20 years ago, and it's not going to be here a hundred years from now. Mm-hmm. So why am I so deeply attached to my experience in this body as real? Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. See, absolutely. <laughs> <Off the deep laughs> <end there. laughs> you know, and then I, and, and then we can use that idea in a powerful way. And the powerful way <laughs> is that we, what we're experiencing is not is an unreality when we're not in mm-hmm. tune, you know, when we're not connected to the big T truth or breath or prana or like life force energy. Mm-hmm. But that means we can also 
since everything we're experiencing from the mind is an unreality, but we see it as our reality, we have the power to create our reality. Absolutely. So what is the reality you want to create? Yep. Do you want to see the world as inherently bad? Mm -hmm. Okay, well, that's what you will experience in your life. For sure. If you want to believe that, you will see people as inherently bad and you will experience that. Yep. But if I get to see the best in people, it's fascinating how incredible everyone in my life is. Yeah. Yeah. I create, you know, and it's un it's an unreality, but I what I like my mind believes to be a reality is pretty incredible because of mm -hmm. that. Yeah. Yeah, you're so right. And I I just had this thought recently of if you could bring out the best in someone, mm -hmm. what would you do? How would you do it? And like that's how we should operate is okay, let's say they are bad. So what? Mm -hmm. If you could go, if you could, if you could be the person that brings out the best in that person, mm -hmm. what would you do? How would you change your, your daily actions? How would you change your actions that you, that you do daily? You know, go do that. Mm -hmm. Right. If, again, to your point, if you, if you see, whatever you see is going to exist, right? Whatever you, you believe to be true is going to be true. Mm -hmm. It's fascinating. It's such mm -hmm. a, I mean, I said this very like tangible lame example is like you buy a white car and all of a sudden you see all the white, or white cars, we'll say yeah. an orange car mm -hmm. <laughs> and you see all the orange cars, right? Right. Yeah. Yeah. Or what do you bring into your world? Like, yeah, you interview you for a job, interview for a job. You start seeing whatever that thing is. Mm -hmm. yeah, I, in my in my job, I, I I partner in my corporate job. I partner with a, a major retailer. Mm -hmm. When I was interviewing for it, I started seeing their trucks everywhere. I never noticed these trucks before, and yeah, all of a sudden they just started popping up everywhere. They were there before. And that's the yoga, and that like they mm -hmm. say, energy flows where attention goes. Yeah. And what, what I love about with Amrit, they're like, with enough practice, attention starts to follow energy. Mm. Attention starts to follow life force. Mm, that's beautiful. It's, it's just, yeah, focusing on that in a yoga practice of just fully seeing, right, that attention mm -hmm. to energy, and then soon the energy captures you. That's awesome. That's a great spot to end. Oh, journal prompt. Journal prompt. It's on you today. I know. <laughs> grab, grab your, your grab, grab your, your 10 diary. journals. Grab your 10 journals. Let me get one for <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah. This is the journal for podcasting. Well, here is an example why I have 10 journals. I am like taking different modules right now. Mm -hmm. And I decided I'm putting them all together. But mm -hmm. I have, so I like have like five pages in with one module. And then all of a sudden... It's getting cut off by the Ayurveda. Yeah. And I'm like, wow, well, it's going to be so confusing. I should have just done a separate journal for this. Uh. That's fine. My my journal is all over the place. Like for sure. Like it goes like I'll have like podcasts, like thoughts and notes, and then like I go to like my gratitude list, and then like something else. Oh yeah, it's totally all over the place. So grab whatever journal is working for you right now, and. What is your big T true? What does that mean to you? And maybe you don't have one and that's okay as well. But when you hear that word, big T truth, what comes up for you? And maybe think of, let's see, maybe a person who in the past you've disagreed with or seen them as the anti whatever you believe. And can you write a few things about that person that you deeply connect with them? And then write anything else that came up throughout this episode. Maybe you can talk about how hippie it was. And whatever reactions you have to maybe things that we said that like gave you a little uh, uh, or some type of sensation arise. I'm mm -hmm. going to invite you to write what the sensation was just as it was versus the story that you put around it. Um, 
And you can do that practice too. If you had a few experiences this last week that gave you a trigger, mm -hmm. I want you to think about them. And then I just want you to write sensations disregarding the story. So journal, journal, That's journal. Perfect. I Get love it. it all out. That's perfect. And maybe even write how, right, when you start, it's funny when you start analyzing your big T truths, oftentimes we start to realize that they're not big T truths. Mm. And maybe just write, maybe you start seeing, right? Like when we, because your journal is very private and no one, yeah. no one gets to read your journal unless you let them, mm -hmm. right? And, and maybe this is the start of you understanding that your big T truths are maybe part of the issue. Mm. they're not bad or good quit passing judgment like quit that shit yeah like stop passing judgment quit saying bad or good i say this in yoga classes all the time like it's you, oh one hip is tighter than the other oh that's bad no it's not it's just that's just your body that's just what it mm. is it's what it right? is yeah it's just what it is and mm -hmm. it's you know again we go we talked about our biases and all that's just what it is like quit passing judgment quit saying bad or good right quit if you're a if you're a liberal and you're like I really want to go hunting mm -hmm. like, but I can't because I'm a liberal, you know, maybe that, maybe that's your big T truth that, that is now your little T truth. And maybe you're, you'll start opening yourselves up to have that conversation. It might be a year down the road. Maybe you're not ready to announce it to the world yet and that's okay. But that's the point of this journal. Free so. yourself. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and the rest will follow. Yes. Who was that? Was that a, um, who was that? Invoke? Yeah, is it? Invoke? Maybe, yeah. Yeah, yeah, I think it was Invoke, maybe. We should uh, cue the song, but yeah. <laughs> yeah, we can't put yeah. it on. We can't put it on the podcast. Well, we'll, we'll put it in copyright. the show notes, though. We'll put it in the show, the show notes. Uh, awesome, Brie. It oh my was gosh, a pleasure. Was so amazing. Thank you. Yeah, I always love chatting with you. Yeah, awesome. Thank you. Right. Until next Talk time. Talk to you soon. If you want to follow us and our adventures, you can find both of us on Instagram. I'm at Bree Allison. That's B-R-E-A-L-L-I-S-O-N. And I am at the life of Alan Titone, underscores between each word. To check out our offerings, yoga, one-on-one -on -one trainings, workshops, retreats, and a recorded library, you can find the info on our website, thehunterandthehippie.com. If you have questions for the podcast, about the podcast, feedback, suggestions, or just want to say hi, or find ways to work with us, our email is thehunterandthehippiepodcast at gmail.com. And don't worry, all of this will be in our show notes. Thanks for tuning in. Hopefully you weren't tuned out. <laughs> to the Hunter and the Hippie Podcast. <laughs>